Hi everyone, welcome back to Think Science. Today we will be discussing the structure of cells. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell icon so you can be notified on more science videos. Before we get started, we wanted to start off with a question of the day. Who was the first person to see cell walls? Leave your answer in the comments and let us know. Here we have two cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells have no membrane-bound organelles and are unicellular organisms. Examples of this type of cell include bacteria and archaea. Eukaryotic cells, however, have membrane-bound organelles. They can be multicellular and unicellular, for example, plants, animals, and fungi. However, despite their differences, these cells share many common features. Let's have a closer look. Here we are in the plasma membrane also known as a cell membrane. The plasma membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer. We have explained what this means in our video on lipids. This barrier is what separates the outside of the cell from the inside of the cell. It is a selective barrier that allows for the right amount of oxygen and nutrients to enter the cell and the right amount of waste to exit the cell. A lot of times people ask, well, it's not like the membrane has a brain and it's consciously saying yes or no to whatever comes its way. So how exactly is it regulating how much goes into the cell when it can't say no? And we encourage you to think about it this way. This is you, this window is the membrane, and this is the outside of the cell. So just like a cell, you need water to survive, but you don't want so much water that you start drowning, right? So this is what happens without the membrane. All of the water outside of the cell is going to come in and it's not going to look so good. But if you have a membrane, some of the water can get in, but not so much that you start drowning. So while the membrane isn't consciously regulating how much is coming in through the membrane and how much is going out, the structure of the membrane with small holes between the phospholipids regulates how much can essentially leak through into the cell. Another component all cells have in common is cytosol. Cytosol is an aqueous jelly-like substance that all organelles are suspended in. Because cytosol is a water-based solution and water is polar, cytosol is incredibly important for many different life functions that we will be discussing in future videos. All cells also have chromosomes, which store the genetic information for the cell in the form of DNA. The cool thing about chromosomes is how incredibly compact they are. Chromosomes are made of chromatin, which is tightly coiled around proteins called histones. They also all have ribosomes, which are small complexes that make proteins by stringing together amino acids, kind of like how a worker in a factory would assemble products. For more information on protein synthesis, I suggest checking out our proteins video. Let's get into what makes them different. One of the main things is how they store their DNA. Prokaryotic cells have one circular chromosome that is located in the nucleoid. Unlike eukaryotes that have a nucleus, the nucleoid region is not membrane bound. Unlike prokaryotes, eukaryotes have internal membranes that divide the cell into compartments or organelles. The separation of these organelles allow for different environments within the cell that enable many different processes to occur simultaneously. So whereas a prokaryotic cell is like a one-room cabin where everything is close together and there are no defined rooms, a eukaryotic cell is like a house where there are different rooms and each room has its own purpose. Let's examine a eukaryotic cell. Before we jump in, remember there are two types of eukaryotic cells, plant and animal. Like we discussed before, all cells have a cell membrane and cytoplasm. Let's take a look at the nucleus, the control center of the cell. A nucleus has three important parts, the nucleolus, which is a region of the cell that is involved with the production of ribosomes, and the nuclear envelope that is a double membrane separating the nucleus from the cytosol. This nuclear envelope is connected to the endoplasmic reticulum. The third part is chromatin, which is kind of like a thread material that contains all of the DNA. When the cell splits, this chromatin will coil up and form chromosomes. Once the nucleus makes ribosomes, these ribosomes will leave the nucleus and start to make proteins. The ribosomes may float around the cell in the cytoplasm, or they can bind to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
The endoplasmic reticulum, also called the ER, is made up of a smooth and rough subunit. It's a network of membranous tubes that are involved in the synthesis, modification, and transport of these proteins that are synthesized by the ribosomes. Once a protein is ready, it leaves the ER in a membrane-mound vesicle and travels through the cytoplasm to the Golgi body, also called the Golgi apparatus. Once in the Golgi body, other materials such as carbs and lipids can be added to the protein. Vacuoles are used for the storage of undigested materials, breakdown of waste products, and the hydrolysis of macromolecules. It is important to note that while vacuoles are always found in plant cells, they are not always present in animal cells. Lysosomes are only found in animal cells and are membrane-bound sacs of digestive enzymes that break down worn out or damaged cell parts. They can be thought of as the garbage collectors of the cell. The mitochondria provides energy for both plants and animal cells. This is the site of cellular respiration that produces ATP. In future videos, we will discuss this process. In order for plant and animal cells to keep their shape, they have cytoskeletons, which contain proteins in hollow tubes called microtubules. Plants will reinforce this structure by using a cell wall that protects the cell from damage and maintains that cell's shape. This is why plants are rigid and snap when you try to break their stems in half. In addition to the cell wall, plants also have chloroplasts, which help them conduct photosynthesis. The green color is due to the pigment chlorophyll that is in the chloroplasts and is the reason that plants are green. It is important to note that cells are different and perform different functions in the body. Because of this, they have different amounts of certain organelles depending on their function. For example, a muscle cell that requires more energy will likely have more mitochondria than another type of cell. So to recap, there are two types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells are unicellular and have membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound organelles and can be multicellular and unicellular. Both types of cells have cytosol, chromosomes, and ribosomes, as well as a semi-permeable plasma membrane that regulates materials entering and exiting the cell. One of the main differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells is how they store DNA. Where prokaryotic cells have a nucleoid region where the DNA is located, eukaryotic cells have a nucleus, which consists of three parts, the nucleolus, chromatin, and the nuclear envelope. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more science videos. If this video made sense, leave a comment to let us know. Be sure to also leave any questions and we will do our best to answer. We also wanted to thank you for your support on our biological macromolecule series. If you haven't already checked it out, you should definitely go do that. Thank you for watching Think Science.